Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today you join me in Scotland. Joined by Ben Team Ben. Hi guys. And well, today we're driving in the GTA, but some pretty exciting news, which is that tomorrow I'm going to be driving for the first time in the new Ford GT, which means that there are going to be plenty of pictures on my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter tomorrow, and then we're going to put together a video, which we're going to try and shoot in quite a nice way, that's the yeah. aim, with the new drone, that will go out at midday UK time on Monday. So this coming Monday, a couple of days after this video. So stay tuned for that, because this should be pretty much, I think, the most exciting drive I'm going to do this year. It's the new Ford GT, it's a future Shmi mobile, yeah. and it's pretty epic, and it's amazing that Ford have given me this opportunity. You must be absolutely bursting at the seams with excitement. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm excited just to film it and fly the drone around, and you know, we're in a, a, a wonderful location to, yeah. to make such a video. But um, yeah, for you to have a, a preview of your eventually coming supercar, it's going to be quite something. Yeah. And just a quick moment for the road that we're actually driving on right now. We're in my Vantage GT8. We're uh, somewhere near Loch Lomond and the Trossachs at the west side of Scotland, just above Glasgow. And this road is probably not the most GTA appropriate road because it's very tight, very twisty and very yeah. bumpy. And I'm sorry for throwing you around a fair bit there, but it's fine. <laughs> this road was, here. was actually constructed before they'd invented straight lines. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> Before they invented them. Yeah. It's like it's like that old spaghetti thing. You just sort of throw yeah. a piece of spaghetti out and see where it ends up. Yeah. But unfortunately, it does also seem to uh, be home to people who don't like driving very quickly. He's let us buy them. He's he a smile on his face. Yeah. He can now enjoy some V8. <laughs> Look at that. Flip it. It literally, this is like the definition of a road that kind of goes backwards and forwards. But I'm going to go back to sort of the title because I've titled this video obviously about the fact that I'm going to be driving the Ford GT which is not necessarily what this video is about and that sort of raises this whole topic of clickbait and clickbait and the title and thumbnail of a video is an interesting thing for me as a YouTuber, for us as creative yeah. content, for the other YouTubers of course that I talk to on a regular basis, the other UK guys, people in different industries, different genres of content um, from all around. And as viewers, the main thing that makes you click a video is what you see as the picture, as the title. Um, so clearly, if you have a channel that's creating lots of clickbait style videos, and we won't name any of them right now, you click it, but then you get angry by it. And I try to not do that. I try and make my titles very topical to the video. But this brings me to a couple of recent videos, which I've thought have been really quite special. And we've just been talking about the one in particular from a few days ago, which was my visit to Ruf in Germany to go out in the rough yellow bird with Alois Roof, which for you and me yeah. is, I mean, it's a dream. Yeah. It's, that car has such a story to it. It's the experience, how epic that was. But clearly for you guys, it didn't necessarily you know, resonate. You weren't that interested in watching it just for a moment. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. That's now, probably the last bit of that we're gonna get as we're now behind the yeah. caravan. Yeah, so let's hope we get another overtaking opportunity shortly. But um, it, it's sort of a bit painful almost that that's the case, that yeah. you're often only going to click a video if it's brand new, the latest, something ridiculous, something crazy, because there isn't necessarily the appreciation for these things that are special, that don't immediately stand out. And that's partly to do with the way YouTube controls its algorithms. Yeah. Maybe you guys do or don't know that basically how many views a video gets is dictated by YouTube algorithms, not by the content itself, which is slightly torturous. Yeah. Um, and sometimes means we can put together an amazing video. Ben can do a huge edit. <laughs> the caravan just washed his oh, window. We got sprayed. <laughs> That's funny. So Ben can do an amazing edit yeah. and then it ends up going nowhere. Um, and that can be obviously quite you know, frustrating at times. And then sometimes we can throw a video together and, well, you know, everyone will watch it when it was basically nothing last special. minute hurry job or something yeah yeah, yeah completely i'm desperately hoping we get an overtaking opportunity <laughs> this road is being massive well, there we go down the dip <laughs> quite narrow actually anyway yeah. we're through we are uh, you can have some v8s as well but it's it's a difficult topic it's a really like really 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 difficult one as to how we create content and what would you guys like to see on this front i mean i'm sure you'd prefer I don't clickbait, but then that's how this platform seems to be working at the moment, so. I think a lot of titles get thrown into the clickbait bin, sometimes undeservingly, you know. Yeah. For 
me, clickbait is um, something that gives you an impression of A, but when you watch the video, you get Z. Yes, okay. Um, whereas the sort of clickbait that we try to do is factual. You know, it'll be like 200 miles an hour in a Lamborghini. Yeah, you know, that's an attractive, I mean, exciting the, title. The one that comes up quite often is collecting my friends, can't exactly yeah. Lamborghini. And in my case, I will only write that if it is genuinely a friend. Yeah. It's like somebody I actually know and I hang out with, not like somebody some I've do. just turned up at a dealer and some guy is just collecting a car. Yeah. And that's, I think, you know, it sort of detracts from the real videos that have those kind of organic titles because the others take the topic away. Yeah. But anyway, this is kind of an interesting one and it was it's a, a bit of a sort of shame, I think, for purists that something like the roof video doesn't get the traffic in. I think deserves. And, sure. Yeah, like when we went out in the Ferrari 250 Pininfarina as yeah. well. Yeah. A million pound older car, uh, but didn't sort of have the same appeal. And I know you guys like the newer supercars, that ten tends to be what I film and what I enjoy driving. I'm just going to say it's quite funny that we're having this conversation on a road like this, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Look at you're, the way it's You're doing pretty well to, you know, keep up a, a fair pace while we're all over the place and having a conversation. I do that every now and then. This is a solid road, wherever we are. Oh yeah. It doesn't matter really where we are right now, no. does it? <laughs> anyway, so that's basically the main sort of thing I wanted to, to touch on for now, but it's kind of interesting while we're both in the car just to chit chat away about car lots and what's going on these days and where we're at. And it's an interesting story actually I saw in the last couple of days from Autocar about the reviews on the Ferrari 488 GTB. And I think yes, you've seen some you, of that yeah, well. you sent that to me. Very and interesting. It's to, to let you guys know about it a bit more if you didn't. So basically, Autocar did tests with the 488 GTB as every manufacturer did when it came out. Uh, sorry, every, not manufacturer, that wouldn't be right at all. Every <laughs> magazine, publication, etc. Um, and the car they tested was a car fitted with Pilot Sport Cup 2s. So basically, stickier rubber than normal. And Ferrari don't actually sell to customers a 488 with Pilot Sport no. Cup 2s. Which means if you do a track lap, set your own you know, time, you will be doing it in the regular P0, which is still a great tyre, but it's, well not the P0, is it P0 or Super Sport? I don't know which tyre it is actually. It's um, a Pirelli for sure. Yeah, so it will be a P0. Yeah, yeah. And the P0 is never going to match the lap times of a Sport Cup 2. So basically everybody set their sort of track times, comparing it to other manufacturers, and then Autocar have just realised that you can't actually buy it from Ferrari in that spec. No. So it's all bit unfair. If that's not a spec a customer can have, how can you do the road test yeah. and compare that like for like? How can you put a 488 up next to whichever other car and, and call it a fair comparison if one is the spec the customer can buy and one isn't? Yeah. Um, so they have announced that they are basically pulling back all 488 track times tested with that car and they won't feature that as a sort of comparative metric again. They will have to do it all again in future to get sort of fairer numbers, sure. which to me feels very fair. Um, yeah. I think it's an interesting sort of topic of discussion because we all see these Nürburgring lap times and things. And, yeah. Um, every brand here, not just pointing at anyone in particular, takes cars to the ring and is it fair? Who knows? Do, do those cars have dodgy tyres? Do those cars have more power? Do those cars have different sort of aero bits bolted yeah. on that you don't necessarily yeah. see because you're always looking at an in-car in yeah. view? It's all a little bit suspect sometimes. So. It's a fairness thing, really, isn't it? These, yeah. these tests need if, to be... If one of the other manufacturers had done that with their tyres, you know Ferrari wouldn't be happy about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stop um, him. I think Ferrari's justification for it was that if you ask very, very nicely, they'll uh, put pilots on your 458. Yes, the Speciale yes. came with the Sport Cup 2s. Yeah. So the Speciale came with those tyres, so it is... Uh, type approved, yes, um, but not the 488. No. And if you go to a dealer and ask for Sport Cup 2s, the dealer will probably no, tell no, you, no, 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 no. not really. You have basically have to buy them yourself and stick yeah. them on the car. Um, so that's been an interesting story. And actually, it's not the only Ferrari thing in the news recently. It's because not. We've also had all the rumour mill has started yeah. again <laughs> concerning the Ferrari SUV. Um, no potential names or anything like that. Oh, I, I think. don't think at the moment. I think it's probably quite far off, and it's actually okay. quite interesting because when you go to um, a McLaren press launch, they're very keen to point out that McLaren will never make an SUV. Yeah. But obviously, Bentley now have the Bentayga, yep. Aston Martin have the E46, 
factory in yeah. Southampton. That's yeah. in its second, second phase. We'll see that car soon, I guess. Um, the Lamborghini, Lamborghini Urus. Urus is coming, and now there's all this talk about a Ferrari SUV as well. Yeah. Um, Whereas well, after Ferrari specifically said uh, a few years ago um, that they will deserve shooting if they make an SUV. Yeah, they seem to have gone back on that a little bit now. now I, I kind of see why, because the market is clearly there. <laughs> that guy likes the car. Um, if you go back, obviously, Porsche used to be a sports car company. Yeah. Now they make something like 30,000 SUV year. company. Yeah, they make 30,000 a year and something like 150,000 SUVs, Macans, KNs, and Panameras. It's crazy. So, sports cars has become a small part of Porsche's business. And you can see Bentley, I think, was similar. They were making maybe 5,000 cars a year, and now they make another 5,000 a year at Tegas. Yeah. And Lamborghini make, I, I don't know the exact number, maybe it's 2,000 cars a year. Thousand, yeah. And now they're probably going to make the same number of Euruses on top of that because there'll be market for it. So I don't blame Ferrari. You know, they make 10,000 cars a year. They're still very small produ production. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see if they can make it a Ferrari. And you know when the, the FF came out, that was also a sort of, is this a real Ferrari? Yeah. But to me, it, with, well, yeah. to me it is. I love them. Though. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they do, how they do this. Time will obviously tell. It might be one of those things, I mean, I'm really not an SUV guy at all. Uh, and when the Cayenne came out, I just thought it was the ugliest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> but now you see them driving around and it feels normal. So yeah. maybe like five years down the line uh, after Ferrari le releases an SUV, we'll all be like, you know, it's it's, it's normal, expected. I can tell, yeah, we, we've just crossed into a national speed limit, so. <laughs> it was compulsory. <laughs> It's build. just a hooligan machine. There's a bike behind me who I think quite enjoyed that as well. I think it's the same guy who went past. It is, it is. Up. Yeah. He liked it so much. He's... <laughs> uh, anyway, the roads up here are utterly amazing, which is why the 4 GT is coming this way. And that's about yeah. how we actually started this video to just drive and enjoy in any car. I mean, this bit of tarmac is lovely. The ups and downs whoop, over the bridge. <laughs>
I mean, you've got to imagine that the progress in electric power technology yeah. in the next 20 years is going exactly. to be astronomical. Exactly. And look at what is already available. The sort of off the speed, off the line speed of the uh, Model S yeah. um, and the Model X is crazy. Um, <laughs> he wants a photo. Oh, that's difficult. There's nowhere to pull in here. Yeah. There's nowhere to pull in here, but he's <laughs> got no idea that we're making this video. Um, I was going to say, the off-the-line speed in the Model S and the Model X is it's it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's you before you even get to like, the Rimac. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I was going to say, yeah, you get to those technologies, and look at the hybrid capability of the Project 1 and the Valkyrie that we're going to see all of. These things are insane, so it's not all bad. It's actually quite exciting if it pushes things in that direction yeah. to me, um, using technology to benefit us. So I'm looking forward to that and where that goes. And um, something that I was extremely worried about for the future and now a little bit less so is, is noise. Mm -hmm. um, having been in the Renault Zoe at, at the Goodwood uh, Festival of Speed, that's obviously quite a small low powered electric car but it makes all the right sort of noises and bangs and whirs and electric noises. It's not, you know, it's not a combustion noise but still that sense of occasion and drama from a car. Yeah. And I think that's the important part necessarily more than exactly what type of noise it makes. Yeah, I agree, and it will be interesting to see what that does in the supercar world, because the yeah. Rimac had some pretty crazy stuff yeah. as well. Yeah. Like, uh, big time crazy stuff. Yes, very different to when I was in the Rimac and you were in the Zenbo. Yes. Like, yeah, polar opposites two opposite, in terms yeah. of this technology. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, interesting to see where that goes, and also thinking of the future, where this YouTube channel is going, where the Shmuel 50 channel is going, because that's something that's clearly, well, the whole, this whole world is shaking up a lot at the moment. You look at some of the other guys, Sam Paul, selling the cars, um, looking at different things, and it's exactly the same for me. I've been putting out a video every single day yeah. for, well, two-thirds of a year now, um, since late last year, and I'm going to aim for the full year. I'd like to get to the end of this yeah. year, having done a video every single day if I can. But well, I can you might die. I might, I might die. It is insanely like, hard work. If any of you guys don't quite appreciate how hard that is, like, trust me as someone <laughs> who does, like, occasional videos of him, it's really hard. I, I know when you did uh, the video on James's channel not so long ago, yeah. you, you, he, gave you, he gave you major props for, for, you know, how long you've done daily it's, videos, and it's deserved, you know, it's, it's a hard, <laughs> hard slog to get a video every day. Especially with the fact that they're all in different countries. Yeah. Yeah. Every day the video kind of, I think I just jump from one country to another and you'll see a video from Spain or from yeah. Italy and then from Germany and then from Scotland yeah. and then every now and then I'm back at home. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't even keep track of it. It was uh, a few weeks ago I needed to collect something from, from Tim and I spoke to you like two days ago and you were at home and then I dropped you a message like, oh I need to come and collect whatever it was and you're like, oh I'm in Andorra. But of course you are. <laughs> Um, so I think one of the things going forward, and I'm interested in your guys' feedback on this, is to see if we can create content more with some of the faces you're familiar with. So if Ben jumps in a car and, and makes a video, or if a number of the other people that you've maybe seen on my channel in recent times do. Um, obviously we would like to keep the style and the type of content you're familiar with. Um, I'd say very much the Shmi style, if I, yeah. can, if I can say that. But almost as a Thumbs way up of, for the thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> the cheesy double hand point in the car with the thumbnail. Um, but the Hi Guys, I'm Shmi yeah. mixed into whatever their name is. Hi Guys, I'm Shmen. Shmen. <laughs> Shmark. Shmo. <laughs> whatever it is. Um, so we've got lots of, I guess, options um, on that front. But I'm interested to know if you'd be offended by that or what we think um, could be done. So let's yeah. go this way. I mean, it's always going to be your channel. Yeah, um, for sure. For instance, uh, we were just talking earlier, um, I've potentially got the opportunity to go over to uh, the Daytona 24 hour uh, towards the yes. end of this year. And probably some of you would like to see some content from there. It's, you know, something completely different, um, but a real petrol head nirvana place. So, yeah. why not? And I also think it's interesting to get different perspectives on things. Yeah. Um, it's sometimes, I mean, I, I know what I know, and obviously I'm quite nerdy and factual, but sometimes you want a different angle on that. You yeah. necessarily want that sort of exact view. And it, it also gives us the opportunity, if we have a few people involved, to go and do some pretty cool trips as well. Yeah. Um, and things. I've got some ideas. So, 
I just want to have arguments, okay? <laughs> I, you know, I, I want us to be given a car that one of us hates and one of us loves. And oh, okay. I can see that happening. Get some proper, yeah, some uh, diverse opinions. You know, sorry, just break up the conversation with GTA noise. <laughs> you know, I think the more I drive this car, the more the sound bends in. Yeah. The more bubbly it's getting. Yeah. But one funny thing is, and I, I've talked about this, if you put the window down, it doesn't get any louder <laughs> at all. It's exactly the same volume, you just get a little bit of wind noise, but that noise is totally the same. And it's totally ridiculous. Um, let's close that back up. Just, yeah, yeah, so you can't it. have a GTA video without a bit of no, you appreciation can't. for the noise, can you? Not than so. something else. Oh yeah, and it doesn't come across on video. We, we, we bumped into some fans earlier today. Yes, and they said in their own words, "You don't get it on the video." No, I really don't. So guys, you've got to come and see this yeah. car somewhere. And at the time this video goes out, actually tomorrow, it's going to be on display uh, at the Ignition Festival. It's going to be there. So get over there right now. Yeah, so get over there right now if you're in Glasgow. <laughs> if not, then I'll try and let you know what else is in the works in future. Uh, but these roads. This car are all awesome, and Ford GT is going to be even more awesome. Yeah. So come back, check that one out on, on Monday at midday UK. So one o'clock if you're in Europe, or that's what seven a.m. if you're on the east coast of America, or I'm confusing I'll myself. Take your word for it. <laughs> Three? No, no. Wait. Uh, Four a.m. if you're in LA. You know, stay up. Yeah. <laughs> Different times depending where you are. Anyway. Uh, we've waffled on, I think, more than uh, long enough. We'll wrap this one up for there. Just some interesting, I guess, news topics. Keen to hear your views on the sort of titling, clickbait almost side of things. And obviously, to let you know that the 4GT video is coming. So I am looking forward to sharing that an awful lot. Do stay tuned. Make sure you check it out. And as always, keep subscribed. And uh, I'm going to do a shout out to Ben as well. Go follow his Instagram. If you don't Yay. follow, at BenzineBen on Instagram. Get on with it. Ben needs some more followers. Let's crack 8K. Yes. Make it happen. <laughs> we'll wrap it up for there, though. So thank you very much for watching, guys. That is it for now. We will see you again tomorrow.